So when I say significant developments, we know that Yahya Simwa has been killed by the IDF. And I wondered, do you think that there is a case for optimism there that Netanyahu can go, we have killed the leader of Hamas. This is the total victory that I was talking about. Now let's try and make peace. Do you, do you think that that might happen? If this was the sort of noise you were hearing from Netanyahu and his colleagues, yes, it could be that sort of opportunity. The leader of the Hamas has been killed, the man who's held responsible for masterminding and carrying out those atrocities of the 7th of October last year. But what we're actually hearing from Israeli ministers and leaders is that they need to continue to prosecute their war in Gaza. They're going to do so, as they will do, also do against Hezbollah in Lebanon. And it doesn't appear that there is any mood to somehow re-energize ceasefire talks that could bring an end to the carnage. And it is really serious in northern Gaza at the moment. You've got 450,000 Palestinians uh, essentially trapped. There's hardly been any food delivered to them at all. Israel has issued evacuation orders for them to leave, but they have barely got any means to do it. They've got nowhere safe to go because there is nowhere safe in Gaza. And they have no guarantees or reassurances about their homes that they would still be there if uh, they were allowed to return. So it's all extremely serious. And also within Lebanon, I mean, you've got a quarter of the Lebanese population that's been displaced. Um, you know, that's quite incredible. And that, you know, the complacency, I think, of the international community, the leading actors of it, is quite extraordinary because we're no longer just dealing with a an Israeli war on uh, Hamas. We are dealing uh, with a regional war that sucked in other actors, Hezbollah, uh, the Houthis in Yemen, increasingly Syria, and at some point, Israel is going to respond to uh, the Iranian strikes that took place on the 1st of October. So it's just going to get worse and worse. The key actor, the United States, is not doing enough to draw a line under all of this, to say to the Israelis, who are the lead actor, they're the ones, the most powerful actor in this, enough is enough. It's got to stop because it's actually not doing you any good. You are sowing the seeds of generational anger and resentment that will actually not bring security or peace to Israel nor anybody else. Uh, we'll come to the US's latest intervention in just a moment. But I wanted to ask you as well, how concerned would, should we be at these reports that 10 members of Netanyahu's government are at an event this weekend which is calling for Israeli settlement in the Gaza Strip? I mean, is, is a land grab something that could be a possibility here as well? Many members of the Israeli coalition have actually backed uh, the, the idea that they could go back into Gaza, re-establish settlements. They were there until 2005, that they believe that this is an opportunity, particularly in the north, uh, to do so. Of course, those settlements would be illegal and it would be recolonization of Palestinian territory. The International Court of Justice in July said it's illegal, it's occupied and it shouldn't happen. You would think that this would be a red line for the international community to prosecute a war and then go and colonize the territory afterwards. But to be honest, I'm not sure where the red lines are anymore. We have seen so many atrocities, hospitals, schools, universities, churches, mosques being bombed. We are, we are seeing the International Criminal Court chief prosecutor saying starvation is used as a weapon of war. And we are now entering a period where we have just seen endless series of decapitation and assassinations, including today a Hezbollah drone strike against the residence of the Israeli prime minister in Caesarea. So we're not acting as an international community that has rules and laws that need to be respected. And that's going to be a problem because other countries like China, Russia, they're all going to look at this and go, well, if the rules aren't being enforced in this area of the world, why should we listen to them? Why should we adhere to them? And they're not. And returning to the United States, they have 
sent a letter to the Israeli government. And this is in response to the fact that flow of assistance to Gaza has dropped by more than 50% since March when the Israeli government promised to allow more deliveries of food and supplies into the area. And they've sent this letter. And the interpretation, certainly, that I've seen on social media is that what they're saying is, if you don't allow more humanitarian aid into Gaza within the next month, then at the end of that month, we are going to stop sending you weapons. But then actually reading the details of it, it's a lot blurrier than that, isn't it? And I mean, does the letter, in your opinion, actually mean anything in reality? I think it means very little indeed, because you've got to increase the aid. Well, what does that mean? Another 10 trucks per day? I mean, before the 7th of October last year, Gaza was getting 500 trucks a day. And that was in a situation where they weren't in such acute need. Uh, they had access to agricultural land. And most of their agricultural land is now off limits, has been destroyed. Now everybody is in need of food rations, medicines, and it's all running out. All the hospitals in northern Gaza are now not working, not functional. So we have seen every now and again the Biden administration ramp up the rhetoric, issue some sort of criticism of the Israeli authorities, but never really back that up with meaningful action. Because the United States is the one power that could actually say to the Israelis, enough. And even Netanyahu would have to listen to that because that pipeline of weapons, I mean, over $20 billion worth of weapons have been sent by the United States to Israel over the last 12 months. That's an extraordinary figure. Mm. If I was an American taxpayer, I'd be wondering why. So I don't think that this is really an indication from the Biden administration they are serious. And of course, the key date here is the 5th of November. Mm. Well, <laughs> this is going to be way past the 5th of November. And just to, to remind listeners that Kamala Harris has to win in Michigan. It's a swing state and it has a large... Arab American community, many of whom are extremely angry about the administration's record on Gaza, on the Middle East. And so there is this game, really, an electoral game to try to pretend every now and again that the administration is actually sympathetic to the plight of the Palestinians. Chris Doyle, thank you so much for your time this evening, commentator on Middle Eastern politics and director for the Council of Arab-British Understanding there, does really beg the question, are there any red lines when it comes to the relationship between the United States and Israel?